In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can migrate your app from Lovable to Cursor in less than 10 minutes. And this is something that you might want to do for a variety of reasons, but I'm going to break it down step by step, even if you're a beginner, even if you're non-technical and you want to get started with Cursor, this is the video to watch. If you don't know me, my name is Chris and I've been designing apps for the last 15 years and advising startups on product and design. And with that said, let's get your app out of Lovable and into Cursor. Build great products. Build great products. So let's break down exactly how you can migrate your lovable project into a tool like Cursor so that you can use the Cursor agent and Claude code or any other coding agent to build, continue to build your app. Now there's a few reasons why you might want to do this. So I just want to cover those first. First, you might want to have more control over the app that you're actually building. So actually have more control over the tech stack, the tools that you're kind of working with or build it in a, in a very specific way that lovable can't do. That's a really good reason to migrate great from lovable second you might just not be getting on well with lovable or lovable is just not working particularly well for you and you want to try a slightly different tool in which case you can also migrate into something like cursor and third is if you're building something that's a little bit more complex for lovable to handle uh, that can also be a good reason to migrate as well now lovable can handle probably 80 to 90 percent of web apps that you could build it can just maybe not do some of the more complex ones but for most people lovable is still going to be absolutely fine and then the fourth reason that you might want to migrate is if you're coming up against a really, really tricky bug. Now, Lovable has a two-way sync with GitHub, so you can take your code out and into something like Cursor to try and fix a bug that you're coming up against and then put it back into GitHub and then sync that with Lovable so that it still works in Lovable and you can continue building from where you kind of left off, where you fixed that bug in Cursor or using Claude code. And so those are really the good reasons to migrate. And so now let me show you exactly how you can do that. So I'm going to go into a project in Lovable here, one of my recent projects, uh, which is just a test project to kind of get this set up. And this uses the Lovable cloud, the database, um, and has AI functionality built into the app that is using Lovable's own AI APIs as well. So it's quite connected to Lovable in this instance. And we're going to go through a few steps here to get this into Cursor. The first thing that we're going to do is you're going to sync your project to GitHub. And this is this little cat icon in the top right here, if you're not aware of this. So this if I click on this, it says view your project in GitHub. If it's not connected to GitHub, you can basically connect your app project to a GitHub account. If you don't have a GitHub account, you just go to github.com and you can create an account there. And in GitHub, you have things called repositories. Repositories are basically folders with all of the code files. So if you click on this view in Lovable, you can see all of the code files in your project. This is like a folder with all of these files and GitHub is just a way of storing all of those files in one place that pretty much any coding tool can access. So GitHub is like a source of truth for any code. So once you've created your GitHub account and you've connected your project in Lovable to GitHub, I want you to go to that repository in GitHub, which is here, and you can then either do one of two things. But what we wanna do is we wanna get these code files onto our computer so that we can start working on them in a local environment, which is what Cursor is. Cursor is an, is an integrated development environment, which is basically just a technical way of saying it's a coding app that works on your laptop and it works with files that are saved on your lap, on, on your computer as well. So we have to get these files onto our, onto our laptop. We can do these a few ways. We can do this one of two ways. Either we can come to this code menu here here and click download zip uh, and that is going to download a zip file with all of these code files in here um, and second we can click and copy this url here and then we can clone that directly in cursor this is probably the easiest way to do it i find um, but you can do it either way it doesn't really matter so let's open cursor now and go on to the third step here so if you don't have cursor you can go to cursor.com and then just download cursor here um, and that will allow you to then this will allow you to open cursor where you'll get this view here and basically you just click clone repo repo is short for repository which is the folder where your, all of your code is stored on github if you're not familiar with the terminology we paste that url and, and then we click clone from url here and that will clone our repository uh, it's going to then ask us to create a folder where we want to save this so i'm going to just do lovable migration test and then we're going to select as repository destination here. And this is going to clone all of our files um, into this editor. 
this cursor editor view here. So we've got in cursor, just to give you an idea of how cursor works a little bit and the two views that you have here, you've got two views here, you've got agents and editor. In the agents view, you can send AI agents to write code, the same as you would in something like Lovable or Bolt. You basically type in this agent chat box here, and then it will go and do that task. And you can create new agents, which is essentially new chat threads, just by clicking the new agent button there. If we want to see all of our code and edit the code directly, which we're not going to do here, um, but you can do, you can go over to this edit this editor view and you basically get a view on the left hand side of all of your code files here which you can click on so I can click on this file this is the readme that was created by lovable I can click on that file it's got some code in you've got some super base stuff in here basically all of the code files for your project is going to be there what I'm going to do though is I'm going to close this and we're going to copy and paste this prompt in which I've created to basically kind of migrate your projects from Lovable, and you can do this with other tools as well, into Cursor so that you can get this up and running in a local environment. So we're gonna paste this prompt in here, and this basically says, this project was built in lovable.dev. Review the code in this code base and give me a step-by-step -step plan to disconnecting any Lovable dependencies and getting this app up and running in a local development environment. Also, create a cursor migration.md file, and an MD file is just a markdown file, which is just a text format, so it's just text. Um, that gives me a clear overview of this code base and contains these instructions. And we're going to select the model here, Opus 4.5. This will be set to auto if you're not paying for a cursor account, which is absolutely fine. I'm, I'm going to set it to Opus 4.5 because that's going to give us the best kind of results here. And then we just send that to the agent. And very similar to Lovable, the AI agent here is going to go through, explore the code base, create some instructions for us to migrate this from Lovable, remove all of the Lovable dependencies, and then it will ask us if we want it to execute that plan. And I'm going to show you what the file looks like in a second once it's created it as well. And the reason that we're creating this migration markdown file in our project here is because when we create a new agent or when we start any new AI coding agent here, we want to be able to give it context of what we need to do in this project. And we're going to be able to reference that file, which is something that you can't do in Lovable. So in Cursor, what you can do here is you can type at and then you can reference a file. So we're going to be reference. So you should be referencing that file when you're going through and doing this migration in your project to get things up and running. And there's a few other concepts that I want to explain here in Cursor as well to kind of get you started on the right foot. And that is firstly, what is a development environment? So a development environment is very much like the preview that you would see in Lovable when you're building your app. That preview is hosted in the cloud by Lovable that gives you a view of the app that you're building inside the browser that you're using Lovable in. When we're working on a code base on a project like this on our local computer, we need to create that preview on our computer so that we can see what we're working on. That is called a local development environment. And there are specific commands that you run inside of a code project like this to get that up and running. And this agent here is gonna break down exactly how to do that step by step. So you can see on the left-hand side here, this is created a our, um, cursor migration.md file. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click keep file so we can read this. Um, but basically this gives us a, an overview of the code base, what the tech stack is, the project structure, um, the key files that we need to understand. So this is where everything kind of works. So it's also gonna call out lovable dependencies. So this is where things in this project are connected to lovable that we need to disconnect and reconnect to something else that actually works. So we've got a few things here, the lovable tagger, the lovable AI gateway, so that we're going to so we're going to connect that up to OpenAI or Claude instead, lovable branding and meta tags which we can remove and the lovable readme which you can change as well. There's not loads of stuff here but it does give us an idea of exactly what we need to do. It gives us step-by-step -step migration instructions here, which does contain some stuff which you might kind of see as confusing or there is some code stuff in here. But what we can do, as you can see from the agent on the right-hand side here, it gives us a step-by-step -step migration plan and then it said, would you like me to proceed with making these changes to the code base now? And all we have to say is let's proceed with these changes. 
and cursor is going to go ahead and make these changes in our code base. It's going to ask us questions as it kind of works through this. It's going to create a to-do list for these steps that it has to do here, show us the code that it's changing, and then it's going to help us get our local development environment up and running so that we can start working on this app in cursor locally on our computer. So cursor agent has now completed this migration for us. It's given us the idea, it's given us a breakdown of the changes it's made and also next steps that we need to actually get some of the functionality of this app working. You can see on the left hand side here, we've got a, and this might be on the right hand side for you, the kind of UI changes. I've got that agent set up on the right hand side in cursor. Um, you can see on the left hand side here, the browser preview of your app. And this is the development environment that we have created. And I just said yes to everything that the agent was saying in the chat here as it was going through and running these commands to kind of get this up and running. And then it's given us step-by-step -step instructions to add our OpenAI API key to Superbase to connect a Superbase project to this uh, app and then to deploy the edge functions to Superbase if we are using Superbase. And that is the migration from Lovable complete into Cursor. So now that we can start working on it in Cursor and building new features just by creating a new agent and then chatting with this agent to add any new features in our app in Cursor. So that was my guide on how to go from Lovable to Cursor and migrate your app project and then fix any dependencies that you might have and anything that's connected to Lovable and kind of set things up by yourself. And if this is your first time kind of doing this, this gives you a bit of a starting point to building applications with Cursor. And also because you're cloning all of your code files to your computer, it also means that you can kind of test it and play around with Cursor to get a feel for what building on Cursor is like. And if you are building an app with AI, I've got a Community helping people do just that over at school.com forward slash AI apps. We've got over 200 people building apps with AI and you can also learn how to build and launch your app in just 21 days. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Build great product. Build great product.